Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I, I was telling my brother, I said, oh, you know that guy up there? That's me. That's to remind me of who I am. <laughs> you know why? Because the wife is not here. And uh, she worked last night, and she works in the emergency room. So, and uh, and they are so short that they they don't have enough people. And uh, unfortunately, we have to say it was government created, like it or not. And uh, but apart from that, good morning. Good to see you all once again, and uh, our grandmother there, and our church grandmother has gone to be with the Lord last month. She was 91, I believe. An amazing, an amazing, amazing woman. Outside of being Portuguese and stubborn, that's another word. Uh, not to insult any of the Portuguese that are here, but that's true, okay? So take it if you like it or not. <laughs> and uh, she was my prayer partner, my prayer warrior, the one that would join me every single morning at 5 a.m. when we were in our church in Peace Providence. And then the Lord opened the doors for us to buy uh, a little place in 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 Seekonk, Massachusetts, where Pastor Bob had driven by there many times, and uh, we were a group of nineteen plus, and we were able to purchase that place. And she would join me every morning once again at five in the morning, and uh, once in a while she was just when we I know none of you have ever gone through financials. Uh, little setbacks, but uh, she would place that $5 and then $10 and $20. But outside of that, her husband did not like me at all. And uh, he was Portuguese Catholic, and one day he said he was going to take care of my vehicle. <laughs> and uh, But she stuck it out. She stuck it out. And for whatever reason, the Lord took him home, and she became a warrior. And I can still hear her words, and she would say it in her broken English and Portuguese Azorian, and she would say, Pastor, I pray for you. Uh, the words didn't mean much to me, but the way she said it, and she was there. She was that warrior. And uh, so I, I say to you, our grandmothers are special. And very, very special. There was competition between her and another sister we had in church. And she would try to let everybody know that she was the grandmother of the church. <laughs> and please don't take this wrong. But she... Also, every Sunday, she would come and give me a $5 bill. She said, Pastor, this is for you to buy coffee. But one day she said, Pastor, this is a little bit more because I got my husband's wallet and I was able to get in there. And this is for you. So I don't know if I should take the money or not. <laughs> but Paul said, don't ask questions. So I didn't <laughs> after that. And uh, but one day she surprised me because I go to church early. And, and I'm saying this because how precious the grandmothers are in church. And uh, Pastor Bob has been in my office and she happened to go in early. And so I would bring my suit to church and I would change in church. And there I am changing in my in my office and she just walks in. And catches me in a semi-birthday suit with a beautiful cake. It was a pineapple cake she made. And, of course, her five dollars. She goes, Pastor, oh, Sister Leonor, what are you looking? She goes, oh, Pastor, don't worry. I've seen stuff like that all my life. 
Ah, how precious and how much we miss them. They're precious. I believe God gives some grandmothers specially for the pastors. And so I say to you, treasure them. Amen. Treasure them. Treasure them. Praise the Lord. My uh, my wife sends our dear sister a hug. She's not here with me. You see how happy I am. I mean, you know. And uh, but I don't know what the Lord the Lord has been speaking to you. But it is important that the Lord reflects His thoughts into our hearts. And and I thank God for for surrounding me with some Joshuas and Caleb's, you know, that are that are very important. People that don't know you, people that do, here's the word, do know who you are outside of your ministry, your personhood. Amen. You see, I'm not a pastor. I am a person. We don't hide behind behind our title and, and our calling. See, there are people that look for respect because when they use the word reverend or pastor, or what, you see, that's all they have. They have no character. They don't have any integrity. So they have to use their title. But our person. Do you remember what the Lord said, I am that I am? That's what he was saying. This is who I am. <laughs> and then for us to know who he is, he gave us some type of a name, God. <laughs> But what is it? And one of the things that God desires you and I as Christians born again, and I say Christians born again, you, you cannot declare yourself a Christian unless you are born again. And because you're born again, that declares you a Christian. According to John chapter one, and it says that he gave you the power now to declare yourself a son. See, that's your identity, your son. That's who you are. God declares you a son through your born-again experience because of his son. And you associate with him, you have him as Abba Father. And, and what the Lord is desiring you and I to see, what others don't see. I, I, I want you to get that. You see, I, I, the Lord desires us to see what others don't see. You see, what you see will identify your actions and reactions. And then it moves you. Now, if you can go with me, I, and I love this, and if you have your Bibles this morning, and those of you that are 21st century, you have your apples and oranges and your Samsung's and you know, whatever else you have. Uh, if you can go with me to the Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 12, we're going to start there if you don't mind. And, uh, and, and I want you to see that God does not know age, no time. We do. Some of us this morning Actually, we didn't get up out of bed. We Some of us roll, you know, because you feel just about every pain when you're getting up, so you kind of roll a little bit, you know. You look, Am I talking to anybody? Uh, there, there you go. Thank you. I, uh, thank you for not making a liar out of me. But, you know, deep inside, if you didn't say anything, you are a liar. And uh, <laughs> But uh, my daddy used to say, you know, uh, I smell Bengay every day. <laughs> You know, and I want you to see in, in Genesis chapter 12, and can someone read out loud for me verse 1 and 2? Genesis 12, 1 and 2. If you graduated high school, you may read. Go ahead, sis. Amen. Thank you. 
Father, we ask your blessing. I ask your blessing that you will touch my thoughts and my lips. And once again, that I will not misidentify who you are and misrepresent you in Jesus' name. Amen. I, God desires, his desire is that you and I will live the dreams that he has. Joseph had a dream. You remember that, right? Joseph has a dream. Well, God gave him the dream. And, but God just does not want to give you a dream. Have you, have you ever heard people say, Pastor, I have a dream. I, I have a dream. I said, good, then wake up now. You can only have dreams when you're sleeping, but you have to wake up. Hello? You, you have to wake up. So years go by, I have a dream. Years go by, I have a dream. No, it's time to wake up. And what it does is God reveals to you certain things, but yet now the actions must come, and that is to live. But you must see above what other people see. You see, we are not natural people. That's our problem. We, we, we are not natural. You see, this, this book does not speak to the natural people. This book speaks to you. He that has an ear, it speaks to you. The world cannot understand it. They only know it as historical. But to you and I, it's not a historical book. It's a history of what God has done. So you now can create your own history of what God is going to do to you. You see, but God cannot do it unless... <laughs> That, that you see what others don't see. I, I, I remember so vividly when, when I accepted the Lord and then, then I, we just celebrated 43 years of four days ago with my wonderful wife. 43 years with that woman. Amazing. She's so blessed to be with me. I, I, she's so fortunate. You know, and... I met her at 15 and a half. I wasn't even a Christian yet. And when you go back and you see what God has done, that's only to let us know that was the seed. But apart from that, when you step out, always remember God needs to take you out of the environment that surrounds you. Because he does not want you to see what your surroundings are seeing. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? When, when we got married, six months later, we find ourselves driving 1,836 miles down to Tyler, Texas. But with all of the ridicule and everything that you can think of from your family saying, are you crazy? Yes, we are. We are the most stupidest people in the world. But that's what the world labels you. But we are of the faithful. And in Hebrews, speaks about faith is. But faith has to see in the spirit realm what's in God's kingdom. The world can't see that. It's a substance. And the first thing that Abraham has to do is hear what God tells him. And what does he do? He, this is the second time the Lord is asking him because he has called before, but he took off. And he waited for his father to die. And God has to go back again and call him and say, Abe, hey, your daddy is dead now. Now, I want you to see this. He asks him to what? Leave. Now, watch this. It says, and the Lord what? Spoke. And the Lord said what? He spoke to who? Abraham. The Lord spoke. 
It's important. Pastor, what do you mean it's important? It's because the voice that speaks to you will be the guidance that will lead you. And you must believe it. That's the idea. You must believe in the voice that speaks to you. And when the people looked at me and looked at my wife and they all said, you people are crazy. Why are you going down there? I don't know. Hello? That's the way God does it. He places a desire. And from that desire becomes your seed. And from that seed, beloved, is where your destiny is hidden. It has, it'll be relieved, but God won't show it to you all of a sudden. Come on. Am I talking to anybody? You see, the problem that we have is the fear of the unknown. But my God is on, on the unknown. And the unknown for me is the known of him. And he desires to bring you there. When, when I found myself in Haiti, oh, I tell you, boy, they make some, some coleslaw that will put fire in your nose. Whoo! And uh, so I say to you, if you do not move, in the voice of God, you will never, ever, ever know what God is up to. You have to. And here, for instance, the Lord says it's time for you to go. You live in God's dreams. God's dreams are the ones that are going to incorporate in you, watch this, to impregnate you. <laughs> now, I want you to know this. No matter what God gives you, Joseph had a dream. He was impregnated. But through that time, his problem was he spoke to the wrong people about what God had given him. When God gives you something, we look and we say, we're all excited. And we think everybody's going to be just as excited as you are. No. Always be careful because you're going to have two kinds in your world. And that is the dream killers or the dream builders. The dream killers will come and say impossible. But the dream builders will say, I'm with you. Hello? Now, what's going to happen is when God gives you something, here are some things that will happen. A question will come into your own personal life. And that is the first thing that will come in is doubt. Doubt will be your first. Second, the impediments will come. Your setbacks will come. And your dream killers will be there. But life is filled with so many surprises. Hallelujah. How many here have been married over 40 years? Do you remember when you were in love? Oh, Pastor, that was so many honeymoons ago. But do you remember that? You need your falling in love stage. But you cannot live in your falling in love stage. Because your honeymoons become over. And we get all excited. But doubt will set in. The enemy will come and try to suffocate what God has given you. So doubts will be there. The impediments, the enemy will put them on your way. But yet, all of that, your setbacks will be there. But I want you to hear this. Now, if you go with me, and you will see that in Genesis chapter 26, verse 18. Twenty-six, verse eighteen. I want to go all the way, all the way down to Isaac. Remember Isaac? You know what his name is. His name comes from a doubting stage. His name was given to him because mama doubted. And because the Lord had spoken it, he could not take his word back. And she laughs on the other side. And here, he makes a mistake just like his daddy did. 
Things are going well. Things are okay. But there was a famine in the land. It goes all the way down. Now I want you to see this. I want you to see what others do not see. He said, and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abram, and he called their name after the names of which his father had did. Now, I want you to know that Abram had dug some wells, and they found them. But Isaac is going there. Now, I, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. You see, the world will come in and try to put some sand over your hose. The world will come in and try to throw some sand in your eyes. And the, and the world does not want you to have it, so what do they do? They cover it up. And Isaac, he seen what others did not see. He said, I'm going and I'm covered them. And they topped him again. And he went back again and he uncovered them. And he tapped them again. And he went over again and untapped them and they covered. Now watch this. That's what he's doing. He sees what others don't see. In your walk. We need persistency. We need perseverance. It didn't work the first time. It didn't work the second time. It didn't work the third time. It didn't. How many times are you going to do it until I find it? Because God said, I will be with you. That's where my persistency is at. He showed it to you. But you're going to keep on going. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call unto me, and I will show you, O oh glory. And then they did it again and again. And then you know what he did, Pastor Bob? He went back. He said, now I'm going to do my own. There was some there. Why? Are you? I want you to see this now. Please get it. Others have tried. That's others, but you're not others. You are your own God's individuality. Totally different than everybody else. Totally different. And he dug and he found his own. And the Bible says, and they didn't bother him anymore. What do you see what others don't see? What do you see? We are spiritual people living in a natural world with the kingdom of God envisioning you to see what others don't see. How many heard of this fellow by the name of, was it Firestone, something like that? You ever hear of Mr. Firestone? Do you have Firestone tires? Yes. Mr. Firestone. He told everybody that he could do it. Nobody believed him. He tried and tried and tried and went bankrupt and tried and tried and borrowed money and tried and tried until he discovered that it could become volcanic and you could produce that rubber. Am I right? But he died broke, poor. But he's seen what others did not see. Johnny Wheelbarrow, did you ever hear of Johnny Wheelbarrow? Well, well, do you have wheelbarrows? Well, that's how it came. He, he left home. Mama gave him a little bit of money. Just a little bit of money. And he hid the money so no one would rob it. And then all of a sudden, he hid, he hides the money. He hides the money in the barn. The barn catches on fire. He's right back again. As his life story goes, a prostitute helps him out <laughs> and get in a job. Did you ever hear of the Sudabaker? Well. He went from 
all of the disasters up and down, up and down, up and down. But he was able to do and see what others don't see. You don't stop. And here, Isaac, he's going back and uncovering. The world comes in and covers. The world will bring you the impediment so you can doubt your calling and what God gave you. He want, the moment you doubt, that is where you stop. The devil said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, if, I don't live on ifs and I don't live on buts. You know what we live on? Watch the promises of God. God makes a covenant with you. He may, and now he calls Abram, but here's the first thing. Beloved, we need to come out, and I, I want you to give you, I want you to know this. Are you ready? He says, I'm going to start with you, Abraham, with a zero factor, with nothing. What you say, Lord? said, leave your daddy's inheritance, leave your Suda Bakers, leave your Rolls Royce, leave your everything, just you and your wife. And are you ready for this now? And his wife says, Abram, where are we? Come on, ladies, help me. Where are we going? Where are we going? And guess what was Abram? Answer, I don't know. What? <laughs> God said, over there. Yeah, Lord, yeah, over there. But uh, no, leave everything behind. Your credit cards, your everything. Leave everything that pertains to daddy because I, I am your inheritance. You got that? But leaving on the promises of who? God. So it takes off. But one problem, I got, I got to bring this in here for all of us here. This is what the Lord is teaching us. But Abram did not do 100%. He had a nephew by the name of who? Lot. You see, the little foxes that come becomes the, impediment, the impediments of you reaching your destination. Have, have, I, none of you know about Lucille Ball. You're, you're not old enough to know who she was. Uh, she was quite a character. Do you remember when she got an RV? Well, she got an RV, and she's taking off on the RV. I mean, she's all excited. Everywhere she went, she gets a rock. Stops, she gets another stone. And then stops, gets another stone. And before you know it, the RV is packed with rocks, and now Richie cannot get the RV up the hill. He can't understand why it doesn't go. When he comes and finds out why does the RV does not go up the hill, he finds out she's got tons of rocks in there. But she started with one. That was no problem. See, Lot came along with Abram. And there was a dispute in between them. God brought the dispute. Sometimes we blame the devil for the little things. You see, the impediment. Say with me, impediment. You see, he was the impediment for him. He said, now, you, you need to separate. Now, watch this. Every time you separate, God is going to show something a little different here. We have them. We, they're hidden. You know what those impediments are? Can I tell you? How many want to know? What are the little disturbances in you? 
Did you ever get on your phone and you watch this, watch that, and before you know it, an hour is gone? The two hours are gone. I mean, it means nothing. But th the devil is so clever that he gets your attention. There's, those are the impediments of your growth. You are focused and he's got your mind. He's got your spirit. And here, Lot was there. And Lot thought that his blessing was because of him. No, it takes off. Now, this is where I want to get to you. You, 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 you can go there and read it after yourself. Right in chapter 12 and 13 and all the way down. Watch this. The Bible says that when they parted, Abram, passed about, Abram went to him and said, you choose. Watch. When you read it in your originality, it means pride sets in. Let's, let's use the young people. This stupid old fool giving me the choice. And the Bible says, and Lot lifted his eyes. A natural man always lifts its eyes for what's best for him. But Abram did not do that. Abram stood with a leftover. He seen what Lot did not see. Lot, Abram still had nothing, but he had God. He lifted his eyes. Watch, watch. It was green. Walmart was there. Coles was there. You know, uh, well, I'll, I'll stop here, okay? But everything was there. The malls were there. All the restaurants were there. And Abram had nothing but what? A desert. He lifted his eyes. It was green. Watch. Towards Sodom and Gomorrah. You see how the devil is so clever? He throws it at you. It's so glittery, but you don't have enough character to what? Resist. Your choices and our choices and decisions will destine our future and how we finish our journey. Do you get that? See, here, I want to give this. See what others don't see. You may not have what they have. You may not enjoy what they enjoy, but you see what they don't see. If God is with us and for us, who can be against us? Oh, my goodness. I, I remember my first vehicle in Brazil. It had air conditioner. It had holes everywhere. And many times I had to stop that vehicle and put a rock behind it. I said, God, this is where you take and bring me to this? No, I wouldn't do it. I said, I am privileged, Lord, to be here with these people because I am in your destiny. I am in your dream. I am fulfilling your dream. No matter what, you can see it God's way, not your way. While others are driving by, you know, and there you are. I feel like Flintstone. No wonder Paul said, I know how to be rich. I know how to live in the sweets. I have had abundance, but now I don't. But I am content. Content not, does not mean happy. I am content, meaning that I accept my portion. Amen. And we come back to the U.S. And we got a little Chevy Sprint. It had four cylinders, but it ran on three cylinders. Gave me 57 miles for the gallon, but would not make it up on, on President Avenue, poor thing. It went down well. My tea is, are you content with the portion that God has given you to see what God sees? Joseph seen, watch this, Pastor Bob, Joseph seen what God was trying to show him. He said, no matter where he went, 
the Lord was with him. No, the dream was in there. Oh, come on. You cannot kill somebody that's impregnated with the dream of God. Everywhere they went, no matter what came against him, you know what happened? He was closer to his destination. All of your blessings are found in your impediments. No matter what impediment it is, you're getting closer to your blessing. You're getting closer to God's destiny and fulfillment. And I say this to you, no matter where you went, watch, Joseph prospered. Now you tell me, how does a jailbird prosper in jail? How does he come? How does he become the deputy sheriff in jail? Because God is with you. You get that? God is there with you. You got to see what God sees. And Joseph seen when he said this. Now I know for this reason why all of this happened. Please don't get me wrong. If those were my brothers... I sure would make them suffer. Oh, yeah, Pastor Bob. I love that verse, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But he didn't. I, the reason I said this is to say this. Okay, let's, let's go on. Are you still here with me? Your setbacks and your roadblocks are nothing but just opportunities. I say this to you, not only that you will have the dreams of God, but we must have the vision of God. How does God see things? See, God sees, the funny thing is, God works from the forward backwards. That's how he does it. Now, Abram is what, 75? 75 years old. He's going to have his first son when he's what? I mean, the first son when he's going to have is Isaac at 100. 25 years have gone by before the fruition of God's promise. But seeing and, and having what God has must be very, very important. Now, I want you to see what Lot seen. Lot seen the natural. Abram sees what? The supernatural. He sees what God sees. He sees in his vision. He sees the kingdom. And that is so important. Now, if you go with me. And you will see that in Genesis 12, when he said, leave everything. Now, I want you to see this. Leave everything behind. Why? Because I want you to go forward into the Hebron. I want you to go forward wherever your feet are going to go. I, I want you to know that whatever and wherever you go, you are in your future. And not only in your future, but you are in your son's future. You are in your grandchildren's future. Whatever you're doing, you are planting the, the, the soles of your feet for the next generation. You may not even see it. He said, Abram went out looking for what a city that was not built by what? Man's hands. He's seen things that others would never see. But watch this. When he is there and Lot is out of the way, the Bible says that everywhere that Lot, that Abram went was this. He planted an altar. Do you know what that means? He is claiming the land for the Lord. You see, what we don't have is altars in our lives. We have altars, the uh, sacred TV, sacred dish network, sacred Comcast, sacred direct TV. We have those altars, but I'm talking about altars that conquer the future. He did an altar, and there, I want you to see this. The Lord said, now, Abram, look up. See, some of us are like the chickens I have in my house. I have five chickens. And chickens just go, bah, 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 bah. I talk just like them. I have one that is called uh, Rosie. And she is the biggest loud mouth in there. Bah, 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 bah. And the other one's a little quiet, you know. And uh, Rosie. And, and she comes around. I mean, she complains. 
And, and, and she doesn't like being around the others. She, she's so possessive of her territory. And, but that's a chicken. That's all. But you see, God wants you to stop in the neck in here and to look in up and see his wonder. He wants you to open your eyes and see how grandiose God is. And he says, Abram, what are you worried about? You all, I mean, you're worried about a hundred years old? Abram, I can do with a man a hundred years old just like I can do with somebody that's 25. Because everything that Abram, do you know when he went to, to, to take his son away from Shaldalama when Sodom and Gomorrah was invaded? He brought 385 men that were born in his, in, in his, in, in his place. And he took him at a hundred. I want you to know, here's a man that's going into war a hundred years old. What? Here, pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying stop making excuses. Our excuse is nothing but a lie. Because God can do it. He says, look up, and that's my covenant with you. You don't know it, but I want you to see your future already ahead, ahead of time. You may not live it, but your sons will live it. I want you to know that you're here. I want you to see what God wants to show this church, and he shows our church. It's not the, how many people you may have. It's how many are going to get into the pearly gate. That you are faithful until what? The end. The end is going to define exactly who we are. I want you to see, and then I want you to know that we will have those impediments. We're going to have those setbacks, but you're going to have those mountains. Remember those mountains? I want you to see that Jesus looks at them in Mark chapter 11, and he sees them, and he says this. If you look at the mountain, you know what their problem was? They were trying to do something on their own, and you cannot do it. See, John... Peter, James, and John, remember these? The Lord brought them up there. He brought them up to what? The mountain. And the mountain of what? Transfiguration. You see, God wants to transform our eyes and transfigure what we see. And he brings them up there. Here's the secret. Way up in the mountain. You see, going up the mountain is okay, the first steps. But by the time you get halfway, you're tired. And then you get 80% of the way. The air is a little wet. Yeah, the air is thinner. And then you go way on top and where they were at, it's cold. <laughs> oh, pastor, what are you saying? If you want to see things God's way, you've got to leave your comfort. You've got to leave your complacency. You're going to lose your sleep. When, when I hit, went to Haiti, it was crazy. I went to a, a hotel that was looking for a star. And here you leave America and you go there, and Haiti is in a calamity, 1990, 1992. And the manager brings me a pail of water. He said, this is for you. I said, I don't need that. I, I got to no, this is for you, for you. I didn't know that at a certain time, the government shuts the electricity. And there I am. I mean, boy, they see the white skin, those mosquitoes, and they said, whoo, glory. I mean, I got shampoo everywhere. And pew. The water goes. I remember the water, the pail. I went out there and I did it like the old Portuguese style in Azores. I said, wow, this is a little different. Then we go to the service at night. We have electric and then whoosh, now here comes the Haitian brothers with some candles and some little flashlights over my head so I can read my Bible. And we leave from there all the way to Las Calles, way down at the end. I mean, way down there. 
I mean, it's torturous. Wow, it's so wonderful to be a missionary in America. But not there. You, you begin to understand that's the calling. You begin to see things. And then when you see that you bring in smiles and, and you bring the word of God and you see people transformed and you begin to see things the way God desires for you to see, that's what happened. You need to leave the ground to go up to the mountain so you can see the real Jesus. But he can't show that to everybody. And then when you get there, it's cold and you're tired. And all of a sudden, that's when the Lord shows in your weaknesses, he transforms himself. He didn't transform himself just for him. He does it for you and me. It's time that we see things that others don't see. That others don't see. See things God's way. See things that God, it's time that we may ask, Lord, is it time that I move away from my complacency and I move into what you want to contemplate in me? But here, I'm going to close with that, and that is the mountain. You must see, the natural man sees the mountain. The spiritual man sees the other side of the mountain. And the Lord said, if you have what? faith, but you don't doubt. It's just called unbelief. And the children of Israel didn't make it because of what? Unbelief. And here, here's the thing. I'm a true believer in miracles. But Jesus said, you can say to the mountain, move, but when you pray and you do not forgive your brother or your sister of their, that's the only part that he uses on that one there, when you pray, it's in Mark, if you don't forgive, your heavenly father will not forgive you. That means that you are the impediment of your blessing. And many of us are speaking to the mountain, saying all kinds of things to the mountain. But what the Lord said, when you go and pray or you give your gift, go and make it right with your brother. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Says, oh, uh, Pat. Yes, he said, leave your gift at the altar. Don't bring it home. Leave it there. Go make it right with your brother. You see, that could be your first mountain because your blessing is on the way. But because I don't forgive, you've got to see it God's way. And then the mountain shall what? Be removed. Where are your blessings? The blessings on the other side of that mountain. Where is the blessing? Watch the Lord said, I will meet you on the other side. But halfway, he had what? A storm. You're going to have storms in your life. But the storms, beloved, is not to sink you. It's not to drown you. The storms is for the Lord to show you what you're not seeing, that you can walk on water. Oh, hello. And here, everybody is in there. And big mouth Peter. Lord, if it's you. And the Lord said, what do you mean if it's me, buddy? It's me. Well, if it is, then tell me to come out. Oh, uh, it's me. Okay, Peter, 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 what are you doing? He said to come out. He said, Peter, Peter, he said to come out. You see, I don't want to be a spectator. I want to be in the game. You see, people pay to watch the game. I want to be the player. You need to be the player. Oh, but I'm going to sink. It doesn't matter because the Lord says, come. He's still standing on water. Hello? Am I speaking to anybody? See what others don't see. Small, show that nothing is impossible for the Lord. What is it that you have that's... It's time that you give it to him. It's time that you throw it at him. Two things I want to ask you today. Resurrection day is coming. Nail to the cross those things that are bothering you. And then begin to move and do and see what others don't see. Would you stand?
nail it to the cross.